Thank you very much. It's great to be with you today. It's always uh, good to be in, in Abu Dhabi. Uh, I'd like to thank the uh, organizers, Mustar and Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week, uh, not only for the invitation to speak with you today, but, but for what you're doing uh, for sustainability and for our collective future. Um, it's always great to be in Abu Dhabi, one of the great capitals of West Asia. Uh, and, I, and I say that pointedly, uh, because I know we're told that we are in the Middle East, of course. Uh, but when I consider Abu Dhabi, I consider us that we are in West Asia. Why are we told that we're in the Middle East? Uh, because an American naval strategist, writing in the year 1902, de declared this region the Middle East, of course. Uh, but we are uh, in West Asia. It's a shorter flight from Abu Dhabi to Mumbai than it is from Abu Dhabi to Cairo. If you want to fly from Dubai to Beirut, you'll be on a plane for four hours. Dubai to Karachi, you're on a plane for two hours. Uh, and, and as we talk about the Asian century and as we talk about Easternization, it's very important that we remember that we are in West Asia right now um, as well. And so let me begin uh, by putting a picture of a, a young boy. It's always good to have a smiling child in any presentation you give. Um, but today is January 15th, uh, 2018. Uh, and what is that number that I have next to the child? On this day, 353,424 children will be born on this day. Is this day particularly special? No, it's just like any other day. Uh, every year, 129 million children are born. In the 15 minutes that I will spend here with you setting the stage, there will be 3,600 children born in the 15 minutes I spend with you setting the stage. 129 million children born every year. Where are they being born? They're being born mostly in Asia and Africa, and also Latin America. Mostly being born in the 85% of the world that lives outside of Northern America and Europe. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that is not a forecast going out to the year 2030 or 2040 or 2050. That's our current reality today. 85% of the world lives outside of Northern America and Europe. We talk about the rise of the rest, um, but the demographic domination of Asia and Africa is with us, and it's going to be with us going forward into the future. Now, when we think about the world population, you can see Europe is shrinking. Northern America is growing at about uh, you know, 60 million by the year 2030. Uh, Asia will add another 600 million people. Africa will add another 500 million people. By the year 2050, Africa's population will double. We're going from 1.2 billion to 2.4 billion people in Africa. Uh, so where are we going? Well, wherever we're going, we're going there fast. We're living in a, in a period of unprecedented connectivity. We're living in a world where every minute of every day, there's 250 hours of YouTube video uploaded. Every minute of every day. Three million pieces of content are put onto Facebook every minute of every day. We've never seen this kind of connectivity in our world. Uh, we all know Moore's Law, Gordon Moore, uh, the founder of Intel, who said computer processing power doubles every two years or so. But how many of you know Mike Tyson's law, right? Mike Tyson, of course, the great American boxer who, who once said, everyone has a plan, that is, until you get punched in the face, right? Uh, the punches will come. Uh, we're living in a world of geopolitical risk. We're living in a world of technology disruption. Uh, we're living in a world of where markets, it doesn't feel like markets go down anymore. After all, we've been on a bull run around the world, but markets do go down. Oil prices do go down. Uh, and certainly in a place like here, you feel it when it goes down. And we're also living in a time of climate change. And I think it's wonderful that the U United Arab Emirates has appointed a minister of climate change. Uh, you, you, we all understand, everybody in this room understands the importance of that, despite the fact that there are still some deniers. Um, we're living in a world where, in addition to natural storms, there are social storms. If Facebook were a country, it would be the second, it would, sorry, it would be the largest country in the world. Uh, two billion people, we can call it Facebookistan. Yep. Right? So there are five key trends. So how are we going to look at the trends that are in many ways disruption proof? Well, I have five trends that I think are disruption proof. I, I uh, alluded to one of them, the 85%. These are the five headlines. You know, I, I'm a former journalist, so I still think in terms of headlines. I'm a recovering journalist, I often say. So these are my five headlines that I think of. And I'll go through each and every one of them very briefly. 
85%. We talk about the, the rise of the rest. Well, you know, this is really, as one of my colleagues at the Emerge 85 lab says, it's really the most. 85% of the world living in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Uh, again, this is the population numbers. Uh, today, three out of four people on Earth live in Asia or Africa. Again, these are not forecasts going out to the year 2030 or 2040. This is our current reality today. Three out of four people live in Asia or Africa. Asia in the year 2030 is looking at nearly six out of 10 people in the world population living in Asia by the year 2030. Um, and by the year 2030, 78% of the world population will live in Asia or Africa. Again, uh, this gives you a sense of the demographic domination we're talking about. 129 million children being born every year is headline number two. Now these are disruption proof trends because it doesn't matter who sits in the White House. It doesn't matter who sits in the Elysee Palace in France. It doesn't matter what President Donald Trump tweets today. There will still be 129 million children being born every year. And they will be being born mostly in Asia and Africa and increasingly Latin America, the 85% of the world. 129 million children born. Now, this is the headline number three, 1.5 million per week. What do I mean by that? There's 1.5 million people moving from a rural environment to an urban environment or being born in an urban environment every week. Ladies and gentlemen, we're living in a world of cities. 1.5 million per week, newly urbanized. We've never seen this level of urbanization in human history. Uh, we, in, in the world is 54% urban today. We're headed for 66% urban by the year 2050. In the year 1900, we were 15% urban. In the year 1800, we were 3% urban. Urbanization is the defining feature of our age. And Asian cities, in many ways, are defining urbanization today. Uh, 1.5 million per week. Think about that. Moving from a rural environment to an urban environment. And cities, of course, are economic engines. There was a McKinsey study that showed 600 cities account for two-thirds of global GDP. Broadly writ large, eight, you know, the cities account for 80% of global GDP. You take a city like Seoul, it accounts for half of South Korea's GDP. Jakarta accounts for a quarter of Indonesia's GDP. So cities are economic engines. Asian cities today, four of the top five and six of the top ten largest cities are in Asia. It wasn't the case in the year 1900 when only one of the world's largest cities was in Asia. This is an example of what we talk about when we talk about Easternization. Uh, now, headline number four, five billion by the year 2030. My colleague over at the Brookings Institution, Homi Haras, points out that there's three billion people in the global middle class today. We're headed for five billion by the year 2030. And the vast majority of those new global middle class entrants are going to be coming from Asia. This is a picture of Easternization. 88% of the new two billion entering the global middle class will come from Asia. The global middle class is shifting. The global middle class is shifting, whereas uh, we're moving towards a global middle class by the year 2030 that will be two-thirds living in Asia. This is Easternization. Uh, rapid growth in China, India, Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia is building this global middle class. The $56 trillion in consumer spending by the year 2030. There's a reason that companies like Starbucks and Unilever and Nestle and General Electric and others are chasing this global middle class because the size is so large. The world's largest importing region is Asia, 36%. It also accounts for one third of global GDP. This too is Easternization. This too is the center of economic gravity shifting to the east. Under 30, this is our final headline. Uh, under 30, the world is young. Uh, the world, 50 more than 50% of the world is under 30. But it's particularly young in some of the regions I described. The median age in sub-Saharan Africa is 19. The median age in Europe is 42. It gives you a sense of, of the, the differences in age. China is not one of the younger countries, the median age of 35, but the world is young. And you add all of this, you take all of these trends and you add the smartphones in your pocket. Now the smartphones in your pocket have the same computing capacity that NASA had to send a man to the moon in the late 1960s, and that's in your pocket. 
and that's in pockets in India, in Bangladesh, in Egypt, and elsewhere, driving the, the future of Easternization. Nexus states and cities. We're in a nexus state. The United Arab Emirates, I consider a nexus state, a, 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 a state that, that, that connects continents, connects regions. Singapore, Hong Kong, these are nexus states and nexus cities. And the nexus states and nexus cities are going to be well positioned to, to benefit from, in many ways, the Asia air travel revolution and some of these trends that we're talking about. Uh, China demand. We can't talk about Easternization without talking about China demand. From hog farmers in the United States to Bordeaux producers in France, Chinese demand is reshaping entire industries. Uh, and, and for those who say that China's economy is slowing, it probably is. But as it's moving towards a more consumption-driven economy, it's going to slow, but there's going to be opportunities for those who are selling to the Chinese middle class. India is rising. Every month, one million Indians turn 18. Every single month. Every, every second, three Indians experience the internet for the first time. Every second of every day. India is going online. India is going online with a, a speed that is unprecedented. By 2027, India will overtake China as the world's largest middle class. It already has, of course, the world's largest film industry and the world's largest you know, film stars like Shah Rukh Khan. So we are winning the war on poverty, so there is good news. It may not seem like there's good news in the world today, but when you look at the numbers, when you look at the numbers of people that have been lifted from poverty in East Asia and Pacific and South Asia, there is a lot of good news out there. But let's not forget Tyson's law, of course. Uh, there will be punches, and there still are punches. Um, let's just take a look at air pollution. The World Bank estimates that there are 6.5 million people who die every year because of air pollution. I said that right, 6.5 million people who die every year because of air pollution. There is still enormous inequality, there is still malnutrition and hunger in many countries. Uh, and, and I think one of the biggest challenges that we're all going to face as a globe is the jobs crunch that is coming. No matter where you stand on the Africa is rising story, and I do stand on the story that I think that we've seen significant growth. We're seeing new entrepreneurs. We're seeing a new commercial dynamism. No matter where you stand, they're not going to be able to create enough jobs for the kind of numbers that I just described, a doubling of the population. And we're going to see jobs crunches. And, and, and the fourth industrial revolution and the automation revolution in manufacturing is coming at precisely the wrong time in, in many cities in sub-Saharan Africa uh, because they will not be able to find the manufacturing jobs that help developing countries move up the ladder. So these four politics-proof trends, urbanization, connectivity, emerging middle classes, and demographics, in many ways, the center of gravity of these trends are in Asia. And I would just leave you by saying that as goes Asia, so goes the rest of the world. Thank you.